love and care for us. Thank you, Father, that you know our needs. Father, thank you that you made, met our greatest need by sending your son to die on the cross in our place to provide our eternal need of forgiveness and reconciliation and of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your son. Thank you, Father, for the work you have accomplished there in, in meeting our greatest need. But Lord, there's other needs that our brothers and their, and their church people have at this time. Lord, there are people who are sick and some who have family members who are very sick and are in the hospital. And we pray, Father, that you would just uh, put your hand upon them in the hospital, as well as those who are sick at home, and that you would heal them and raise them back up, help the fever to run its course, help the body to, to function and work well. And Father, we pray if it be your will that we won't lose any more preachers to, um, to heaven, but Lord, you'd keep them there in India and the nations around there to continue to preach your word. We know, Father, to be absent from the body as a believer, is to be present with you. We all also know, Lord, that uh, as Christians, um, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But Father, we have such great needs in our world, and you know this, and so we commit that to you and pray for your grace as we go through these troubles. Help us, Lord, to be able to love and minister to our people better because of sicknesses, and then, Lord, uh, as we said, it be, be possible that you would heal them from their sickness. Lord, we pray your blessings upon our class now. Thank you for these who are able to attend and others who will be joining and watching in the future by video. May, Father, uh, may you encourage these uh, men in their preparation and their understanding of your word, especially these first 11 chapters of Genesis. Thank you, Father, for giving us the book of beginnings. Thank you, Lord, for recording these things for us from an eyewitness point of view and then allowing us to know what you saw and what you did. And we pray we will give you the glory. So bless this time, Father. Give me the strength I need to be able to communicate your word. Help the men to be able to pay attention and understand and put it together, Father, for their understanding so they may be able, may be able to teach others also. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and uh, see if I can get this screen up here. And as usual, I'm having problems. So give me a minute. Right, sir. You, uh, everything is fixed for setting the screen. Yes, I'm just trying to get my. Now I'm trying to get my um, computer to to uh, obey. So I'm oh. working on it. Okay. It's there. All right, there it comes. Okay, the first thing we'll be doing today is taking a quiz. Uh, last week's assignment was to read Genesis 1 and 2 five times and study for a quiz. And then we will be having a, a sermon due next week before next week's class to be emailed to Dr. Victor at trainingdiscipleships at gmail.com. So this was our assignment for last week, <coughs> or for this week, excuse me. And so now let's go ahead and move on to our quiz for today, which was a study for a quiz of the days of creation. And so get a piece of paper out um, and, and, and mark this down. You can give your score to Dr. Victor. Uh, go ahead and close your Bibles because it's, it's not going to be fair to use your Bibles. Right. Close your Bibles and get a piece of paper out of some sort. Uh, it'd be an honor system where you're grading your own paper and you can submit your grade to um, Dr. Victor. Uh, yes, it's sir. a very, very simple quiz here, okay? So right, right. close your Bibles, uh, men, and uh, get a piece of paper out, and here's your quiz. 
on which day of creation week did God create? And there's 10 different questions there. So answer these questions, please. Uh, days one to six is what we've looked at. And on which day did God create these different things? So number your paper one to 10 and put a number beside each of those numbers as to which day of the week. One, two, three, four, five, and six. It's only six choices. Do we need to say it verbally, sir? Uh, no, write it on a piece of paper. Write it on a piece of paper, and then we'll go through and grade it, and you can submit your, your uh, score to Dr. Victor after the class today or during the break today. Okay, just a quiz. Just, get, just gives us something, a little challenge, gets us thinking. Gets us thinking. It's on an honor system. It's just a quiz, not the test. Right. Not a lot of points involved, just some bonus point, extra points here. So they get us thinking. Not trying to trick anyone. We'll just answer which day of the week did God create man and woman? Which day of the week did God create light energy? Which day of the week did God create plants? One to six are the answers. Day one, day two, day three. You don't even have to put the day there. Just one, two, three, four, five, or six. I'll give you another minute or two, and then we'll grade it. Okay, does anyone need more time? Anyone need more time? Please let us know. Turn your mic, uh, turn your, um, unmute yourself and let us know if you need more time. Otherwise, we'll grade it. Yes, anyone sir, just one, one minute, sir. Okay, we'll give you another minute then. Not trying to trick anyone, it's not that hard. Try and put them in order. Can you repeat once again question? What was the question? I'm sorry. Okay, Can anyone else? Question? question? I'm sorry, I was talking the same time you were. Go ahead and ask again. Sir, can you repeat once again the question? The, the, one to 10, uh, put you a piece of paper, one to 10, and write down which day of the week, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, or day six, did God do these 10 things? Did God create these 10 things? Okay, sir. Okay. It's on the honor system, self grading your own paper. It's just designed to get us thinking.
Anyone need more time? If you need more time, unmute your mic, let us know. Otherwise, we're going to grade this and then we'll move on to our lectures for today. Okay, let's go ahead and grade this then. On which day uh, you grade your own paper and you'll submit your grade to, to Dr. Victor um, by messaging him or what do we have on, on Zoom? We have uh, by the, through chat, you can send him your, your grades. On which day of the creation week did God create man and woman? Day, day six, day six. Man and woman, day six. On which day of the creation week did God create light energy? On day. day. Day one, correct. First day, day, day one. First day. On which day of the week did God create plants? First day. Fifth day. Day, day three. Day three. <laughs> okay. What And what day of the week did God create the sun, moon, and stars, which the plants need to survive? Four. Day. Four. Four. Day four, correct. Which is really a big problem for those who are trying to combine evolution with uh, the Bible because plants cannot survive for months, years, or eons, ages without the sun. So God created the plants before he created the sun. So uh, day, uh, sun, moon, and stars, day four. On which day did God create matter or material? On the first day. Day one, correct. He's creating the building materials that first day. On which day did God create the fish? Uh, fifth day. Fifth day. Fifth day. Correct, day five. Fish and the birds on day five. On which day did God create the cattle? Six day. Day six. The domesticated oh, animal. Yeah. Yep. Now, on which, number eight, on which day of the week did God create the firmament? On second day. Second day. Correct. Day two. On which day of the week did God create the herbs? Fourth day. Herbs on the third day. Third day. Okay. On which day of the week did God create wild beasts? Six days. Six days. That's correct. Day six. Day six. All right. So just you can send your score in to Dr. Victor. You can send it through the chat. Make sure you just include your name and your score. How many of you got right out of 10? I do. I do. So if you got all 10 right, you just get 10 out of 10 or 10. If you only got eight right, then you can write down eight, but give him your score. And let's go ahead and get into our lecture for today. That's your homework for today. All right, so we're back on uh, day seven now. Back on day seven, we've already gone through chapter one. We're beginning chapter two today. We just barely got into chapter two last week starting. But now we're, we're looking at day seven, which is in found in Genesis 2, 1 to 3. And which it says in our scriptures, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, they were completed, and all the hosts thereon, uh, host of them, that's after day six, which God described in verse 31 of chapter one as everything he made was very good. Evening and morning was the sixth day. So the chapter two starts, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts there uh, of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because it, it, in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Okay, so I know most of you are going to try to jot these notes down, so I'll let you write, jot the notes down, then we'll go through and work through these three verses. So go ahead and you can jot the notes down now. And as you do that, leave a little space between the notes to be able to jot some additional information that we talk about.
All right, let's go ahead and begin working through these three verses then. These three verses. These, this chapter, this, the second chapter of Genesis starts at, at the end, after the end of six days. And begins simply by saying that in chapter 2, verse 1, that it was done, completed, finished. Uh, God's creation. And he, he's done. He has finished what he's done. Everything, verse 31 of chapter 1, was very good. And so now we're, you know, now we're on the seventh day. Uh, there's no need for any uh, trying to blend together, as some uh, Bible scholars have tried to do. They did the gap theory. We already talked about the gap theory, what a problem that is theologically and scientifically and even grammatically between chapter 1, verse 1, and chapter Two, uh, chapter one, verse two. But there's other theories they bring up. They say, well, actually, uh, God created uh, over long periods of ages. These are long ages between each day. You know, there God created in day one, then there were millions and millions of years, and then God came back in, in a sense and started day two, and there's millions of years, and they spread out and try to blend with evolution. And there's a big problem with that. And one of the biggest problems I've already even talked about in the quiz today was that God and his wisdom created the plants and the herbs on day three, but did not create the sun and the moon and the stars until day four. And vegetation cannot survive without the photosynthesis of the sun. Uh, it, it needs it needs that it needs the sunlight in order to, to thrive. We all have seen our plants. Our, our crops um, during several days with no sunlight, how they begin to droop. Well, can you imagine what it would be like after years and years or even ages and ages without any sunlight? And so God in his wisdom chose to do it that way. Another way of showing us there's no long, long periods of time. The Lord, I've many classes start for MTH, for MD. Let's go ahead. we can. See if I can get everyone muted here. Okay. All right, let's continue on. I hope I got everyone there now. Um, let me get this out of the way. So there's no need for these day, a long days, this day age theory sometimes it's called, is also sometimes called progressive creation that God created. They, they say, well, God's still the creator, but he just did it over millions and millions of years. God just simply says at the end of day six, everything was very good. And then he says it was done. It's done. And so there's no, there's not millions of years of resting after that which would imply that same idea, but, but simply it was, a, it was day seven, in the seventh day work week. Moving on to the second point, six 24-hour periods is what I and most um, <clears throat> creation scientists believe, six 24-hour periods, just like we have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or we have a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Those are six 24-hour periods, 24 hours in every day. And God uses in chapter one at the end of every day a description. The evening and the morning were the fifth day. The evening and the morning were the sixth day. The evening and the morning were the first day. And this uses this word yom, the Hebrew word yom, which is a which is translated day. Word yom, and the word Hebrew word yom in the scripture always refers to a 24-hour period when a number is attached, such as the sixth day, such as the fifth day, always referring to a 24-hour period. Um, there's no exception in scripture to when that's happening. In the Old Testament, that's happening. So 24-hour periods there. Now, compare with that, there are the word yom is also translated day in other parts of the Old Testament. And it does not necessarily mean a 24-hour period, but there's no number attached to that. For instance, look at chapter 2, verse 4, that we'll be getting to in a few minutes. It says, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when, the Lord, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the heavens and the earth and the heavens. Okay, and, and every plant of field. He's not just talking about a 24-hour period. These are two different days of the week. 
heaven, earth and heavens, of course, were on day one. And then on day three, the plan of the field was made, every herb of the field. He's talking about now using day like we do sometimes in our English as a time period. Another example of that is uh, some of the phrase referring to the day of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah 30. In times, a, a day of, uh, and sometimes we hear about a day of sorrow. And it's not necessarily one day, but a day can be much longer than that. But anytime in scripture we find uh, a number attached to the word yom, it always refers to a, a, um, a 24 hour period. And so God, God in, uh, in his um, inspiration, definitely brought out and emphasized this point that each of these six previous days were days, 24 hour days, that we now call our, Monday, our Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, these were days of the week. And as we come to the seventh day, verse two, on the seventh day, he's talking about a seventh 24 hour period when he ended his work and when he rested and when he was done. And so that uh, he's trying to emphasize that as well. So once again, brings up the aspect that God is making it clear that he created all things in six days in six days and rested the seventh, uh, which sets the pattern for us of our seven day work week that we all basically live by on our calendars and have, have uh, since the beginning of time. And it was incorporated into the Jewish calendar as well, as they have seven days in a week, the seventh day being called the Sabbath or the day of rest. So day, it's important we understand that. So no matter what evolution is saying, how long periods are required, uh, God says he created some many things he spoke into existence, other things he formed, but God created um, in just six literal 24-hour periods. Now, also here in verse 2, not only is it talking about that God's ending his work, but he once again uses the word asa three times here in verses 1, 2, and 3. Actually, twice in verse 2. It says, on the, on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had asa which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had asa or he had made, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he rested from all his work, which God created, bara, and made, asa. So here we actually have two of the creation words in verse three in Hebrew, bara and asa. Bara kind of gives him the idea of uh, speaking into existence or creating out of nothing. Talk about the word bara. And asa has an idea that he made from things, from the raw materials he already had done, had already made, uh, made the different animals and so forth. And so we're seeing that being brought forth, but we're also seeing, once again, the clarity by the e by the words evening and morning. And God adding that phrase, evening and morning, to clarify, we're talking about 24 hour periods. So all this is being brought out in verse one and three, we're not quite done with verses one to three, but God is making it clear to us from chapter one and into chapter two now, carrying over chapter two, that he made everything in 24 and uh, six 24 hour periods, six days that had an evening and a morning. Just like we have evenings and mornings still today. Our evening basically is a time when the sun sets and gets dark. And our morning, of course, is the time in which the sun rises and it gets light. And we still use these phrases today. And God used them referring to the six previous days and now going to the seventh day when i done though with verses one to three let's get back and let's see about the seventh day in more particular on god on the seventh day god rested it says here go ahead you can take this down we'll look at some of these verses after you get the notes down but god rested on the seventh day god rested not because he was tired though how can an all-powerful almighty god be tired he rested for a pattern for us. So go ahead and take these notes down and we'll look at these verses uh, in the Old and New Testament and understand better the Sabbath rest.
All right, let's go ahead and start looking at these, uh, this page together. So what's emphasized in chapter two, verses one to three, that is that God rested. After six days of active creation, God rested uh, from his labor. And it, it says here, once again, not because God was tired, but the second thing, God rested to sanctify, this is the end of verse three, says this, to sanctify it the seventh day uh, and leave us a pattern as well. We find that more developed uh, in the in uh, as we go along to Exodus. But God, first of all, rested to sanctify that day. We're going to talk about what sanctification means in just a few minutes, and how that word's used throughout the Scripture. But especially what it means in this context. But God did it also to leave us a pattern. To leave a pattern. Look over at the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter twenty, and we'll see what God says there. And we'll compare that with what he says in chapter 31 of Exodus. But as God has given the Ten Commandments to Moses, he goes back and talks about the creation week and uses that for an argument why we have the Sabbath. Exodus 20, verses 8 and following, where God, well, one of the Ten Commandments, in fact, it was the fourth of the commandments, is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, keep it sanctified. Then he goes on to explain why. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy stranger, excuse me, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor the cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. Verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, made it holy, sanctified it. That's the same ideas. The, the Sabbath here was specifically commanded for Israel in the Ten Commandments, but its principles still apply to us. Now, I do want to note, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped down. So, first of all, it leaves us a pattern here. This is on our second note. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. I'm on right here. So it leaves us a pattern be, uh, that goes back to and looking back toward the creation week that God in six days created everything. And on the seventh day, he rested. He set that apart, sanctified it. Now, so he, and he alludes back in verse 11, Exodus 20, verse 11, to the six days of creation, the six 24 hour periods, the six yoms. The Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh yom, the seventh 24-hour period. Look over in chapter 31 of Exodus. In verses 12 and following, we're in instruction to the children of Israel. God's still giving his instructions after um, after this time, and so the Lord's given this instruction to Moses here to be able to teach the people, not just about, um, not, not just from the Ten Commandments, but continues to um, emphasize the Sabbath day and why it's important. So Exodus 31, verses 12 and following. Let's look at this together. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying this, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel. Okay, so once again, this emphasis is particularly to the children of Israel. We'll get to that in a second. Saying, verily, my Sabbaths, my seventh days, and, and, and then it's the Sabbath years and so forth. But the, my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign, a sign between me, God says, and you, Israel, throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Okay, so it's a reminder. It's a sign. It's a, a symbol. Uh, as a reminder, the Sabbath is a symbol of the relationship between God and Israel. It goes on, verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever, do, for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from the people from among the people. Verse 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. 
whosoever doeth any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Now, that's a pretty strong statements he's making here about how the seventh day is to be set aside, no work being done at all, is telling Israel. Now remember verse 13 tells us this is he's speaking to the children of Israel. Look at verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel, so he's emphasizing this is direct, direct this is specifically for the children of Israel. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign, just like the just like the rainbow. Later on, we'll find out in chapter nine of Genesis, uh, Genesis that the rainbow is a sign of the covenant. Well, this is a sign of the covenant between Israel and the Lord. It is a sign. Verse seventeen says, "Between me, God says, and the children of Israel." Forever, for in six days, then he goes back to the creation again. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon the Mount Sinai. He gave him two tablets of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. So what God's making pretty clear that we find it in the Ten Commandments as well. God makes it very clear that, that specifically and directly the Sabbath day established by God during the creation week. But the Sabbath day was for Israel to uh, as a sign, as a symbol, and that they were to obey it and keep it in the Sabbath day. And the Sabbath, by the way, worked out to be Saturday, the seventh day. We still... Uh, even in our culture, in the New Testament culture, look at the first day of the week being on Sunday. The New Testament makes it very clear that Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week. That would be Sunday, but the last day of the week, the seventh day, was Saturday. <coughs> so going on to the next, this next point, the Sabbath was specifically commanded for Israel. And this is the only one of the Ten Commandments not given again in the New Testament. We see the other ones referenced or listed directly in the New Testament. Um, but the, remembering the Sabbath day was not. Um, the Lord Jesus himself made it very clear. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. And the Sabbath is not. And the Israelites, the religious Jews, made the Sabbath almost a God as a ritual to them. Um, whereas Jesus says... That, God created the Sabbath for man. He did not create the, He did not create man for the Sabbath, and making it very strong that God has a purpose in doing that. He says a pattern. But let's look at these New Testament verses before we move on, like Matthew 19, where it says uh, simply here is Jesus is talking to the the rich young ruler who comes to him and and gives Jesus his his list, his resume, why he. Um, believes he is a righteous man and, and um, going to heaven in that sense, we would say today, has eternal life. And uh, he goes through all this and he says, I, but I feel like something's still missing. And of course, that's what the Old Testament law is supposed to do. The Old Testament law is trying to show us uh, that we are sinful and that we can never keep all the Old Testament laws completely uh, or all the laws completely. Only Jesus could do that. And so he goes and says, uh, keep the commandments, verse, uh, where are we starting? Verse 18, and, and the young man says, uh, which of the commandments? And Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, uh, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And basically he lists the different parts that we are to, to obey, especially the last six of them, as thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus left out the one thou shalt not covet because he knew that was one the young man struggled with. He knew that. And the young man knew the Ten Commandments well as well. And so he's listening to the Ten Commandments, and the, especially the one which is included, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself, really takes care of all the last six commandments anyway, as Jesus said previously, or Jesus, we will say later after this, in chapter 22 of Matthew. Uh, but the young man was struggling in these areas because he realized that the commandments were important. What I'm trying to say is God left out the keeping the Sabbath. They understood that as part of the, uh, the Jewish ritual, the Jews are kind of taking it over, but wasn't upon us specifically. In fact, look at Paul writing to the Gentile Christians 
in Romans 13, in Romans 13, they already knew the fact that, that they were only to worship the Lord God, that they were not to use God's name in vain. They understood those aspects because they, they worshiped their false gods before salvation. But after salvation, as Paul's writing to the Roman Christians here in, in Romans 13, uh, he is going through and instructing them about the importance of, of obeying the law, obeying the Ten Commandments, motivated primarily by loving our neighbors ourselves. But he says here in verse 9, uh, for thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. So it includes this, that one this time. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And, and he leaves out, of course, the aspect of the Sabbath day to the, the Gentile believers, uh, to the uh, Roman Christians, uh, even to the even to the Jews in Rome who became Christians, keeping the Sabbath day was no longer necessary because Christ fulfilled that and actually changed the day of emphasis from Saturday to Sunday. And Christ changed that by his resurrection on the first day of the week. Uh, we see another example. Uh, we don't have to look there, but in Ephesians chapter 6, where the emphasis, especially on that passage, dealing with the family, is on honor thy father and mother, one of the Ten Commandments also. The pattern of setting aside, okay, going back to Genesis again, the pattern of setting aside or sanctifying or making holy or separate, and that's what these words mean, one day of the week to God as different and special is set for us here in Genesis, in the creation. God still has this idea in mind, that God wants us to set aside one day of the week for him, a day that's different. doesn't mean, in the New Testament, it uh, doesn't say we, we can't work at all. In fact, those of us who are pastors, <coughs> as I am, pastoring churches, Sunday is, uh, you know, is one of my busiest days of the week, one of my hardest working day of the week, as, you, as it is for you. And uh, I'm exhausted on a Sunday after preaching and then counseling and then talking to people and ministering and shepherding people. It's a very tiring day. My wife and I go to bed on Sunday night exhausted. Um, many, many pastors take naps on Sunday afternoon because it's so hard. And, and so the idea of it being a day of rest for us is not emphasized as much. Uh, but we are still to set aside a day that's different in church day. Uh, is definitely different for me. I, I have a different routine on church day. I still get up on Sundays and have my quiet time with the Lord. I pray um, and ask the Lord's blessings. Uh, and I spend time in prayer praying for other preachers and those going through hard times. Um, but it says, aside, especially in a special day, is a day in which we leave our home, do not go through our regular routines, but actually go out to church and meet with other believers, study God's word together. And though God's called me and called you to be shepherds of the flock, it's still a different day than the rest of the week in which we can do that and enjoy the fellowship. And usually we, we uh, fellowship around food as well and, and just and, and uh, meet for corporate worship and spend time in prayer with each other. And, and it's a full day, but it's different from the rest of the days purposely as God wants to do to remember him, set that aside. And, and God said that as a pattern for us, that's still good for us today, to try to set aside a six-day work week. And part of it in chapter 2, um, this is in Genesis again, in chapter 2, in uh, verses 1 to 3, we're talking about this. It's good for us to understand God wants us to learn to have a day special each week that remembers his creation. It remembers that he's a creator, and, and God's kind of wired us for that. It's kind of in our DNA. It's kind of in our, um, not, not just in a habit, but I would say it's even in our, in our, um, in our body rhythms. I know that the European Union a couple of years ago tried to go to a 10-day uh, work week, and that didn't last very long because it threw people's schedules off so much, their body schedule. We need, God's made us to to need to have that time of rest 
needed a, a break from our, our regular activities, our regular work. And like I said, once again, if you're farming, it doesn't mean you neglect your animals that day or, or if your animal has an emergency. You know, farmers still have to go milk their cows or their goats. Um, you know, they have to tend to your chickens or whatever the case, whatever animals you may have. There's certain work that still needs to be done, but it should be a day set aside special. And even as you teach new believers and in our American culture, many people have to work on Sundays. Sundays can be a, a busy work day in, in, in our culture. But many of our Christians seek to get off on Sundays or not have to work every Sunday, try to get off you know, every other Sunday at the very least or, or every only have to work one Sunday a month. My daughter is a nurse and she has to work usually uh, every other Sunday. And that's just part of what is required of her as a younger nurse, because the hospitals stay busy, even as alluded to earlier on, Dr. Victor, in our prayers. The hospitals stay busy because people are sick, or people have accidents, or people have emergencies. So there are certain works that have to be open on Sunday. We try to teach your people the importance, of, if at all possible, to gather together and to worship, and not just a day of recreation, but a day to focus on the Lord. He pattern. He sets this pattern for us in the six day work week by his example here uh, in Genesis chapter two. And I mentioned at the end of chapter uh, verse three, he uses two of the of his three words for creation: bara and made. Uh, bara and asa created and made. And so those are both there. And then he'll introduce to us another word uh, as we come back for our next hour. So let's go ahead. Uh, this is a good place to, to stop. I'll go ahead and put your next slide up as we get into the next um, the next section. And we will get, get into that and move a little quicker through chapter two as we get back to this section now that we've completed the seven days of creation. Okay, let's take a break for 10 minutes and we'll meet back here at I believe it's 6.30 your time. 